I know Kung Fu. Show me. You are the new student. Come closer. You're listening to the Kung Fu Podcast presented by James Still. I don't care if it's Muhammad, Imad, Bruce Lee. And Steve Newby. This is the original five fingers of death right here. But my hands are registered as lethal weapons. That means we get into a fight, I accidentally kill you. I go to jail. Count us in. Am uh-huh. I? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just wondering. You know. yeah, the microphone isn't on your belly because then we'll hear uh, your digestive. You'll hear me, me, me pork just yeah, <laughs> me pork bun going down. <laughs> yeah, on one of them, you could hear it. You could hear some digestion. I was like, oh. yeah, it was, yeah, it's down by my stomach. <laughs> mm. Mm. Okay, I've had a drink of my coffee. Yeah. Um, uh, I can't reach my sweeties. Well, you got. Do you want to get them? Uh, do you want to get them ready just in case? No, I'll just be crunching all the way through okay. it. Okay. All right then. Well, we'll uh, we'll make a start, guys. Welcome uh, to the Kung Fu Podcast. My name is James Still. Uh, I'm joined as ever by my teacher, Mr. Steve Newby. Hi, Steve. Hi. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're on. Um, we're on number eleven. This is number eleven. We we did our celebration last um, yeah last last time yeah. did our celebration we too. had a donut yeah we did stale donut yeah. hey yeah, we, it, um, yeah yeah that's yeah, true um, how did you know well no, I know we are yeah anyway <laughs> um, we have been so we've been sent some messages by some some fans I guess um, just some general inquiries. And I figured we will just read them out. Well, actually, I'll just read one out, and we'll we'll open the show with a little discussion about this this person's uh, message. What I'll do, guys, if you're listening and you want to send us a message, if you don't specify whether or not we can use your name in a message, um, we won't we won't use your name. We'll keep it anonymous. All right, and that's that's and you know whatever. We don't care if you want if you want to shout out send us your name and just give us permission if not don't worry um oh hang on i was meant to mute that burp then uh, <laughs> well like yesterday's yeah. belch i keep i keep unmuting hang on a second hang on oh, where's my clean food right? ah that's better right anyway so looking right so this we got a message from uh, a guy today it says uh, uh Hi James, hope you don't mind me getting in touch, and I hope you're, uh, you and your club are staying safe at the moment. Okay, because yes, we are on lockdown. Um, he goes on to say, I've been listening to your podcast and I like it a lot. In fact, my only wish is that it could be more technical. Okay, well thanks. Um, what do you think, Stick? The thing is, I'd, that, I'd love to be more technical. Yeah. I would love to be more technical, but you've got to be specific about yeah the questions if so if they ask us a question about yeah. a particular form or um a particular aspect of lao or, or you know which is what we do i mean i i mm. can obviously offer my opinion of something yeah um whether people will agree with it or not it's up to them Sure. But well, I can only offer my opinion about anything else um, and my experience with anything else. Yeah. But but Lao is my specific, you know, starter for ten. Yeah, right. It's your speciality subject. Um, anyway, he goes yeah. on to say. He goes on to say. Um, uh, it could be more technical. To this end, I wonder if you ever had any materials. Uh, if you could send me any material about Lao? Question mark. My instructors are fantastic. A lot of the technical bits get left out and he puts no idea why in brackets and i'd love to have some stuff about the history techniques applications chinese words off syllabus tangents tactics ethics spirituality etc to absorb a long time alongside the syllabus and physical training 
And he, he goes on to say, I'm aware that this really doesn't exist in any formal sense, but wondered if you or Steve had any things you'd collected uh, from over time. Um, yada, 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 yada. Uh, da, 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 yeah. Oh, and, and I hope this isn't presumptuous, presumptuous of me, uh, but I'm frustrated that my searches turn up the barest scraps of info he's talking about on Laogar, and most of that is negative style bashing. <sighs> don't don't talk about negative <laughs> style bashing. Anyway, no. so we had that message, and, I, and again, I won't give out the guy's name. Um, you know, uh, again, unless unless you specify. Um, so pits I want to talk about that. Um, my instructors are fantastic, but a lot of the technical get bits get left out. Now, I would always say to people, I I consider myself very lucky, and I'm not the only one of your students because you've had a lot of ex students say to you over the years, sometimes write nice letters to you, and they sort of go they 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 go on to say, Steve. Um, we're so happy we trained with you because not only did you give us all the traditional um, science, but you also taught us uh, the competition side of it too. So, mm -hmm. you know, so you, in other words, you've got a few strings to your bow there, Mr. Newby. Um, what, do you, what, do you, what do you say about, say about that? I mean, and, and this guy's sort of thing playing, you know, he feels that some technical bits are being left out. Um, well, as you say, but some, some instructors, they've got, um, I'm not going to call it a limited because that's not fair. Yeah. They've got a specific uh, direction or agenda that they like teaching, um, whether they're competitors or whether they're traditionalists or whether they're technicians. Um, they tend to stick to one kind of direction when they teach yeah. and they aim, you know, to teach the people the things that they are interested in so there's two different ways of looking at teachers one is a teacher you know teaches because he wants to be the teacher and or he teaches because he literally wants to teach he wants you know he, he wants people to learn yeah. so that there are two different ways you can look at it you see often people just end up being teachers by accident either their instructor has already gone and they end up running the class or you know, something happens to their instructor or whatever, they end up running the class. Um, but um, otherwise, people go, you know, they've kind of got a calling and they just want to be teachers. Mm. And uh, that was kind of me, really. I just always wanted to be a teacher. Yeah, you, you're like a blues brother. You're on a mission from God. I'm on a mission, <laughs> yeah. I was always on a mission. I just I just love the, the concept of teaching. Yeah. I just love people. Yeah. Asking questions and gaining do you, information. Do you, do you think that a teacher, I mean, we've, we've spoken before about, you know, a style being comprised of many different people with many different areas of expertise, etc. Yeah. And we also spoke about sort of an individual carrying on a style. I mean, for example, if, if you're just into, I mean, it's never, it's never preferable to just be and I, I'll split it into two camps, right? Traditional and competition fighting. It's never okay. preferable just to be, you know, one or the other. It's always going to no. be preferable to, 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 to do the both, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, what do you... But you're never, both you're both never... camps test each other. If you, yeah. if you do the two together, they test each other. You know, do the techniques work in, in a, a competitive arena or in a, a fighting arena, yeah. depending on the rules, of course. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, does the, you know, does it work the other way around? You know, mm. so it's it's just a matter of uh, you've got to have the two, I think. Yeah. You know, because if you have lots of techniques but they don't work in a competitive arena, then you're kind of doing them for nothing. Not 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 just uh, when I say competitive arena, I don't mean oh purely semi-contact or purely full contact or purely whatever. I just generally mean fighting training yeah. um and i guess although having said that i guess a lot of traditionalists would argue that well we don't do competition but we like fighting um you know so we fight a little bit more aggressively or yeah. without pads or whatever but there's there's limitations there oh, yeah. there's dangers and therefore you that you apply limitations to it 
Yeah. Um, other people in some certain styles will say, well, we always kick to the shins, you know. And and sometimes you, you might be running your club and then some new guy comes in, he's done something else. And the first thing you see, you, you see him do is try to kick people around the legs. And you think, well, that's really easy to do. If you're going to do that, then you're going to take everything away. It's like when you're doing sticky hands. As soon as people start kicking the legs, which is an obvious advantage, yeah. you stop learning sticky hands. Yeah. And all you're doing is you, you, you in, in, in lengthen the range, and now you can't do sticky hands anymore. Yeah. So, so it's it becomes, the same with. Um, it becomes yeah. like what they, well, we would deem it sort of free fighting, really, wouldn't we? Or, yeah. It's you know. yeah, but it, but it, it, you know, close. I mean, shin kicks, kicking around the legs, whatever, are absolutely perfect. We will never take that away. That is, the, you know, one of the ideal things to do. It's one of the first things you should do in yeah. in a self defense situation if you're going to use the legs. Because remember, I really try to people to keep people away from the legs if they are, you know, not martial artists and not capable of being able to stand properly or move yeah, properly. Sure. Sure. So. So yes, I absolutely agree with kicking to the legs, leg kicking, stamping on the feet, everything. But if you do that within a sparring situation, you're going to lose the ability to learn the hands and mm. so on. Mm. So once people get in close and they're very close, you have to keep on moving backwards. As you're moving backwards, it's going to be very difficult for you to kick. Um, and therefore, you're not going to be able to. You haven't trained your hands as much as you could have done, because all you ever wanted to do was do Yorkshire shin kicking, <laughs> and, uh, and that's it. Oh, don't know. And, and you get you get the biggest flat cap in the in the room, <laughs> but uh, it doesn't help when you come to do the rest of it. So, yeah. yeah. So yeah, you've got to you've got to apply certain rules at certain times to be able to train certain things. Yeah. You can't just throw everything in at once. Yeah, right, right. And that's that. Um, so talking about going back to sort of uh, instructors, so to speak, um, the, the, there really is no... Um, I mean, one of the great things about being a part of an organisation like the BKFA is the diversity of skill amongst loads of different groups, if you like, in it. Mm -hmm. Because, um, you know, the great thing is you can invite this instructor to come to your club and teach this. I mean, it happened to us when we were doing a lion dance, yeah. you know, stuff like that. And we've been to courses with Sean Vieira and Sharon Gill and, oh, absolutely loved it. And, of course, we had the George Shaw come down once and that was yeah. just incredible. So, but it really is a, a, such a... Uh, and, and Yao, of course. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, last Yao came down, he gave us a, a talking to. Mm -hmm. I remember that. And yeah. uh, I think... I think I asked him a stupid question, <laughs> and he had a go at me or something. About, I don't about, think it, yeah. No, oh, what did I ask him? I said, uh, oh, I can't remember now, but it was funny. Mm. It was funny. And, um, yeah, but I really enjoyed that master, when Master Yo came down, actually. Mm. He's, you know, nice Yeah, stories. he's been to several. I've, I've took him up to Scotland and, yeah. you know, various places to yeah. uh, to do courses for us. So, yeah. on the whole, generally, people enjoy seeing Yeah. Mm. And uh, enjoy the courses immensely. The summer courses are always good, yeah. but uh, it, it it totally depends on what you're going for, what your intention is. Yeah. So. Yeah. But yeah, so everyone, like you say, has got different um, ideas of what Lao is or what Kung Fu in general is. Mm. They've got uh, they they're at, they're at specific periods in their training, so some things will appeal to them and some things won't. Yeah. Some things are going they're going to be capable of, and some things they're not. So it, it totally depends on, on each individual, I guess, each individual's preference. Yeah, yeah. Um, but as you say, it is quite diverse. You know, you have got some amazing uh, competitive uh, stable yeah. there in, in, in all sorts of different areas. Yeah. And some uh, traditionalists who tend to favour one, one sort of direction or another, weaponry, long forms, you know, um, sticky hands, mm. um, uh, the syllabus, the the dissection of the of the the actual style, yeah, yeah, of of the uh, the techniques. So you've got a lot of you know options there. 
and it's great to get an opportunity yeah, to do but all you, of it. I, I mean, I, 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 th I always think I'm very privileged because you've got, you're kind of a, a jack of all trades, aren't you? Really, you're kind yeah. of like master of none, <laughs> <laughs> you're, master you're wing, master wing. Yeah. No, but it was, it's, but, but I mean, I remember when I first started, it was like all I wanted to do was. Uh, lots and lots of sticking hands because you know I've read all the books and stuff like this now you know and I used to bug you and bug you and bug you and bug you and uh, it's uh, you know but but then I'll go through a cycle of you know oh, I just want to do competition fighting or you know I just want to you know, do this or that or, or weapons or something no I'm going through a sort of uh, uh, a weapon phase at the moment but it, it's but it, what I love is the resource of you because y you know you, you've you've paid attention this is what I'm saying you, you know yeah. you've you've had to and I don't know why you're that way inclined actually I've never asked you that why because I love I, I, well because I love teaching and therefore I love learning yeah uh, you know I, I enjoy learning I enjoy questioning the process and that's why I enjoy people asking me questions mm -hmm. I love logical argument yeah you know, um, my my wife bought me a T-shirt uh, which which said at the on the front of it said, "Mr. Logic is a pain in the ass." <laughs> uh, because every time she argues with me, I just think of a logical explanation or a reason or whatever, and you know, yeah. she gets on her nerves. <laughs> yeah, you can't really win an argument with you, can you? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you just you just keep talking yeah. be a politician keep yeah. talking yeah. change the subject skirt round it you yeah. know come back to it later yeah. when you when you've learned you realize what they've actually asked you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but uh, no it's interesting yeah like i said i you know i just feel very glad that you can you you can offer so many different things you know and uh, mm. no that's that's good why is that's it do nice. you think why is it do you think that yeah i won't i don't often throw compliments your way no <laughs> There you go, there's one for free. Why is it, do you think, that there's not a lot of information out there on Laogar? I mean, what, what, why is it, do you think? Um, when, when we started, when, when the association started, I should say, it was very limited within a, a certain area, obviously. Yeah. Um, Mastiao did go to various places and was driven around before he got a driving license right. by a guy called Mike Lavender. Right. Who who eventually started uh, clubs in Scotland many many years ago and um, yeah he got driven to, to places like Sheffield and whatever and he started events there which became clubs and obviously these people that were teaching were, were as you know orange sashes right. by the time they started teaching pretty much the third grade yeah. so but but you could get away with that in those days because the knowledge was very sparse. It's, um, so yes, it, the the problem is, of course, then these people continue to teach it and develop it, but some of them may not have been in the cap capable or not interested in learning more or, or gaining more. Mm. So many of them were specifically interested in fighting. Many of them were specifically interested in, you know, the syllabus. But maybe they thought they knew enough. And and then of course you've got the people who desperately wanted to learn. So you have people coming from Newcastle, you know, like uh, Keith Thomas and so on, mm -hmm. and, and you know, like uh, Morag coming over from Ireland. And you got uh, obviously John Russell used to come up from Bristol to yeah. Birmingham, and so on. So you've got these people who are willing to travel, and of course me coming from Scotland down to. You know, Birmingham weekly, yeah. or well, every so so many weeks, I think it was eventually. Yeah. Uh, I was certainly driving up to Scotland on a weekly basis. Yeah, I but yeah, you used yeah. to go very often. I remember when you were in Hereford. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a weekly basis. Yeah, I was yeah. going up there. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, anyway, so yeah, it it's obviously had its ups and downs as an association, and therefore some areas kind of had to regroup if they've lost an instructor or mm. if there's been some wayward instructor or someone's chosen to leave to do something else or or, or in fact uh, unfortunately uh, died as as you know George Wellington and you know various other people have, have, have you know passed yeah so we have um, you know a lot of changes and a lot of alterations and and then it totally depends on whether that instructor is going to be successful because he may have a different approach to the other guy especially if he moves into the area or he's yeah. 
dispatched to move into that area yeah. like I, I was to go to Scotland and yeah. so on yeah. um, so I kind of you know you choose your areas but I only went up to Scotland as a holiday for two weeks and I stayed for eight years <laughs> yeah oh, so oh, such is life yeah yeah it was pretty when it's fair to say though that when you got to Scotland in terms of uh, like <laughs> the, the, the scale yeah, of 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 some of the people there, it was pretty. You know, it wasn't it was, consistent. It was shall we dire. Say? Was let's it? say it, it, <laughs> dire. I mean, what but was the worst? Was, what, what was the worst? I mean, you don't have to name names, but what was it like? What was going on? It was full of wonderful characters, great people, really yeah. nice individuals. They all wanted to learn. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to give you some of the experience I had when I when I got there. I went. I went to one of the clubs in Fife. I was taken there to see the class and uh, to get in. It was in a school, right. Glenrothes. And as you go into the school, you had to go, you know, had to find the way in. It was, you know, how big schools can be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you go in the school, then you've got to get to the hall. But before you can get to your hall, you have to go through the Taekwondo class, <laughs> then through the changing rooms at the end of the, that, mm. that, that hall. You know that gym, it's back through into the other changing rooms, and then out into uh, the hall that they, where the students were training for for the Laogar, and uh, there they stood there with their jeans on and a sash around their jeans. Very eighties. Very eighties. Yeah. <laughs> did, yeah. did they have mullets yeah. as well, Mister Newman? <laughs> yeah. Drinking our brew. <laughs> uh, I remember Jim Ken's is. Um, uh, meeting Jim Cairns for the first time. Yeah. Um, you know, bless him. He uh, he was a first degree at the time. Yeah. And uh, I went to him and there were two people in the class. Tom was teaching two people in the class and Jim was in the corner practicing his sword, having a go at the sword. Yeah. And I could see that, it, you know, he, he didn't have a lot of understanding of it. And I, I went over to him and I said, oh, can I use your sword and I'll show you this, that, and the other, whatever? And I went, oh, if you do this, and you do that, and then this is how this works, and so on. You know, I'm I'm not going to go into it. And he sort of he took the sword off me, yeah. looked at the sword, and threw it on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that's brilliant. Like oh. it, it stopped. Like it had stopped working. Like the batteries had died in it or something <laughs> after I'd let go of it. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Yeah, oh, great. it was. Oh, bless him. Yeah. He's done really well for himself, Jim. Yeah, yeah, Jim. Christ, he's, I think he's a six degree now. Yeah, I think a, he's done well. He's, a good he's guy, not in the best yeah. of health at the moment, so oh, well, well, you know, well, well, uh, well we all Jim. wish him, yeah, all wish him well. Yeah, everybody wish him well. Yeah, um, yeah, and his, uh, I think his son is a fifth degree, Mark. That's right, Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark, Mark is one of these guys. He's quite a phenomenon, actually. He's got, he's got a speech impediment. Yeah. Okay. The second he teaches. It disappears. Wow, that is interesting. Yeah, yeah. He can talk to you, and he's got a stutter. And then the second he, he speaks to you, uh, s certainly, sorry, the second he starts to teach yeah. in front of the class, no stuttering, wow. nothing. That's, it's uh, just perfect. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, that just gives you some idea that he, he loves to do it. It must be a different part of your brain than you're accessing when you're doing the martial arts. Or, or, Sing or singers have the that. same. Yeah, yeah. yeah, singers have the same. I've heard I've heard singers come on to like Britain's yeah. Got Talent or or you know the Voice or whatever, and and right. they've they've just they're so they're yeah. stuttering. To, they can barely speak. And then the music starts, and they just sing perfectly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. so think, it's it's yeah. amazing. I think your impediment is that you talk too much. But that's yeah, just absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I can talk a glass eye to sleep. Oh, yeah. Believe me. Oh, yeah. mm. <laughs> no, I love it. Really, I love it. Mm. What, what else happened down? Well, up in Scotland, rather. Sorry. What what else? What other stories oh. have you got? Oh. Um, I only had to touch people, and then they kind of shivered. And and when I did the first gradings and that, yeah. they were all shaking in their boots. I mean, it was oh. like a huge. Oh yeah, it was a huge grading. And uh, how big were your gradings back then? Because they were it was about yeah, it was about two hundred people or so Jesus. taking a grading at a time. Wow. But I had a specific way of doing it, you see. So people would say, "Oh, you know, how can you grade that many people?" And and remember, it's all in one go. 
but it was a, it wasn't a grading like people walk up individually and do something in front of you i hate that i hate when people do that yeah. because i just think that all you're doing is scaring the guy he's not going to perform well he's much safer and happier performing amongst other people if you're good enough you're going to see mistakes yeah. if you're good enough you're going to be you're not going to be sitting on a panel you're going to walk around you're going to have all your subsidiary instructors around all the different clubs you're going to have them around and they're going to check people out as well because remember they're looking at other people's students as well <laughs> so they might point people out yeah. but all you're looking for is people are making mistakes and you can spot mistakes if you know the syllabus you can spot mistakes yes yeah. it's as simple as that so it was very easy to be able to do gradings in that sense in that yeah. way and the atmosphere was amazing oh, okay. absolutely absolutely amazing incredible yeah, yeah. Um, and everybody loved it of course and you know yeah. so you you just you don't have to look for anyone who's doing it right you have to look for people who are doing it wrong mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. it yeah. and uh, you generally know from classes anyway if you're close to everybody let's face it um i was teaching the classes i was visiting the classes i knew the people that were teaching the classes um despite how big it was you're i'm gonna know you know who's got problems and who hasn't and yeah. uh, who can't do the syllabus and who can but it might be different for other groups um, and, and other organizations tend to you know bring in some top nabu is some kind of eighth dan or professor or whatever mm -hmm. and uh, or principal and comes in and um, you know sits there and then just proceeds to scare the crap out of people yeah. just because they think that's how the grading's got to be well yeah. i don't believe in that i don't believe grading should be uh, scary i think gradings are a celebration of what you've trained Absolutely. and all you're doing is proving to everybody what you've done yeah. and if you haven't done it then you know that and you know you i wouldn't take the grading then if i were you if you don't think you've done it well enough. So that's why I always gave people the opportunity to choose yeah. for themselves whether they were going to take a grading. Unfortunately, I did that even, you know, when they were going to take the grading with Mastier with the black sashes because Mastier took the black sash gradings yeah, sure. um, at that time. And so, um, yeah, there was one guy, seven hours, yeah. convincing him not yeah. to take his grading. Yeah. We've talked about yeah. him already. Yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, Oh, my biggest mistake yeah, well, yeah there you go oh yeah oh god i remember i remember talking about scotland do you remember when uh, we were in in hereford and uh, we were we, we had a class i think we were looking to open a class in ross on why mm -hmm. and some guy called your number and because uh, that you used the same number for the clubs in scotland than you did for the ones down down in the midlands and some guy phoned up and you said answer the phone james and i did and uh, he said he was Scottish. I like that, mate. I'm looking for a class in Ken Ross. And I went, I, I thought he meant Ross on why. I said, listen, mate, there's no need to swear at me. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, you know, obviously I thought he went effing Ross. And I was like... <laughs> oh. <laughs> I say, I say, what? <laughs> oh, <I'm God. laughs> Oh, you tell me that now. You never Sorry. told me that before. I thought I thought I told you that. I was like, well, who's that? How rude. Anyway, yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> Looking for a club for Kin Ross. <laughs> love it. Oh, Absolutely love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, we had some good times, some funny times, you know. Yeah, honest to God. Um, right, what, what else? I've been watching, uh, funny enough. <clears throat> so I've got a big gripe with... We pretty much every style except Lav. Pretty much, pretty much. But I'm a bitch, you know. Mm. I was watching the other day, right? So at the moment, right, there's a Kung Fu is kind of in vogue, right, in as much as there's a lot of kids' organizations at the moment who call them, you know, Kung Fu kids. And, you mm. know, so a lot of people who have, let's say, spent a considerable amount of time uh, of their martial art sort of journey if you like studying karate or some japanese um art or whatever right and then to to to, to what they what they've um, what some of them do because i've you know follow some groups on facebook they'll sort of profess to teach kung fu so they'll rename 
um, what they're teaching and they'll just generically call it you know kung fu now obviously it's not kung fu it's just they're just using a name but it is the implication right and so what my question to you is i've seen some styles do a version right of sticking hands chi sao which quite frankly has nothing in common with sticking hands right mm -hmm. but and and the reason is it's like i find it hard to understand that when you've got a style like so we'll just say a generic karate okay venture into the realms of uh chi sao or sticking hands which is blatantly there is no denying it which is a chinese method all right that you will find in chinese arts of you know establishing you know sensitivity in close quartered combat drills whatnot okay so i'm just confused as to how they can sort of justify teaching that sort of version of it which is, is quite frankly ugly what do you say to people who have spent most of their time doing karate or whatever you know and then they start to try and teach a version of sticking hands and obviously i can't give a demonstration and i'm not going to name names but it just mm. looks ugly what do you think well, of these instructors who try and do that and you know well first of all it's a compliment <laughs> that they yeah. want to learn something different yeah. because they haven't got it within their range of skills yeah. um but karate doesn't really work with sensitivity um, it's really based on, you know, high energy, if you like, strength, power, whatever. Um, of course, people would argue that because if you become fluid yeah. in it, then you loosen up a little bit and there you go. But just as Bruce Lee said, you know, a karate punch is like an iron bar yeah. and a kung fu punch is like an, uh, a chew with a ball in it, you know, with a chain and yeah. whatever. They go wang. Uh, yeah, go wang. So <laughs> there's the difference straight there. Yeah. But of course, people are. I mean, the, the main reason people profess to teach kung fu and co kind of can get away with it because most of those students tend to be kids yeah. is simply they're they're following the movie interests, yeah. you know, like uh, Ninja Turtles and yeah. that sort of thing, oh, no, no, which no, is, not... that, don't you think that's yeah. weird, really? Because they're ninjas, which is Japanese, yeah. Yeah. and then Ninja Turtles, and then they're doing, like, Kung fu -y kind of stuff. Yeah, but it rhymes, you know, the... it rhymes, Kung yeah. Fu Kids. I don't, look, I'm not having a go at people teaching kids and marketing whatever. Like, I don't care. I, I don't think my gripe is with kids organizations not at all teach kids whatever mm -hmm. as long as they're having fun you know but mm -hmm. it's just when they branch into the realm of teaching adults and uh -huh, they call yeah. it kung fu right and well, these poor yeah. these poor souls don't have the foggiest idea that these people yeah, are just well, making it up well we know that a lot of people from shotokan um, well several people from shotokan started up their own kind of ideology of like call it kung fu one in scotland called tibetan kung fu okay. um there is no such thing as tibetan kung fu which was ideal for him to start that <laughs> yeah prove <laughs> and, it. yeah that's right and then um yeah well he's probably been sitting on a mountain for probably, 10 probably. years you know like the dim mat guy <laughs> oh jesus oh wait i've got something special for you after yeah. this go on keep going <laughs> Yeah, and well, and you, you yourself have, has no, have no other Shotokan kind of people that, that do do that kind of thing, who try to teach yeah. Kung Fu. Yeah. It doesn't work, basically. It, it, it's, it, it looks awful. No, yeah. it looks awful. It Absolutely. looks awful. The movements are completely out. I mean, I, I went to a place in Hereford, and, and we are dissing people here. Yeah, but... We, but I don't intend to diss individuals. Yeah. No, no, no. It's, I just... It's it's the concept of trying to teach a martial art that you have a, absolutely no idea about. Right. exactly. And, and, you know, when I went to Hereford... I went to watch a guy because obviously I was teaching in Hereford at the time and I, I wanted to see what my competition was. I saw this advert, eight styles, you know, eight eight animal kung fu it was, yeah. right? So it had the usual, you know, the, anim, uh, the tiger, the leopard, the crane, the snake and the dragon, that sort of thing. And, and then 
it also had like monkey and you know yeah. praying mantis and all this kind of thing added onto it yeah. so it had all these different animals so i went to watch it and he looked like a really nice guy he, he was genuine he was really you know nice to people so when he had a, a young black sash with him he stood at the front of the class he had a, he had several people you know new new brand new quite a good good calling good yeah. you know and i sat down with the parents and stuff like that just to yeah. with my cap over my eyes just to sort of watch him from a side yeah and the first thing he did was he he showed them a, a form which i can remember to this day because he was so bloody stupid it started <laughs> off with a kung fu movement and yeah. the rest was karate the rest yeah. was karate moves, you know, closed fist, you know, yeah. powerful block, et cetera, et cetera. And then he stepped across and did a low movement, which didn't make any sense whatsoever. And that was his first part of this form he was teaching. Yeah. But the next thing that came out of his head, his mouth was, you know, if you go to a club that tells you to attack people, in other words, in the training, yeah. you are learning to attack he said, leave it immediately because Kung Fu is about defense, not oh, about yeah. attack. And I thought to myself, Dick, <laughs> because how can you possibly be a good defender if you never experience someone attacking you? You yeah. need someone to attack you in the best possible way, strongest possible way, fastest possible way, uh, or, or whatever, so that you can learn to defend in those ways. Yeah. You need... A, a variety of you know social you know interaction with different people mm. in order to understand how sure. people attack and you've got to have people who really want to attack yeah I so, mean, yeah we've definitely i mean we've talked a lot about this on the other podcast yeah yeah sure. and I, this yeah i was gonna ask like when you because i mean a form like you just described okay mm -hmm. is is blatantly going to be made up right yeah blatantly um, i mean yeah. listen if, if, if you're profess him to, to teach kung fu but you know you you can tell you you've got the, the an eye for it so mm -hmm. to speak but how do you i mean you know i i've seen some ropey ropey weapons forms like you know uh, in these so-called sort of you know new age tai chi groups and uh, kung mm -hmm. fu groups how do you tell by looking at a form just in the simplest terms how do you tell that it's possibly made up by someone What's the logical? Uh, what what I'm really getting at is, you know, what gives a form, uh, a, a set, a pattern, or whatever, credibility in your eyes when you look logic. at logic. Logic is okay. the answer, right? And so, yeah. um, what do you mean by that? If if you, it means that it has a logical outcome. It means that it has a logical reason to do it. Right. You you you're blocking, you're cutting, you're slashing. You know, not you're just spinning with swords. With, yeah, with it, well, with with anything. Oh, let's let's just use a pole as an example, okay? Right. Yeah. Robin Hood never taught martial arts, and nor do uh, Robin Hood movies. So why are you using a stick, a pole, holding it in the centre, yeah. giving you two feet on the one side and two feet on the other, and two feet in the middle between mm. your hands? When the other guy will hold it at the end and have pretty much six foot of pole to smack you with, yeah. how are you going to get close to him? Yeah. He's just going to smack your fingers the second you lift that pole, and he can do it from a range that you can't even reach. Yeah. So, you know, by the time you've slipped your pole through your hands to attempt to do it, it's too late. You've been hit. You've been poked in the face, in the throat, in the chest, in the uh, or the little toe. So or you've yeah. been whacked around the shins and the knees and the hips and the face, yeah. and and it's a complete and utter waste of time. That yeah. is my attitude towards people who try to be Robin Hood when yeah. they do sticks. But but I mean, talk, going go, talking about that, I mean, like you're not. I wouldn't. We wouldn't profess to diss any uh, competitive. Uh, weapons forms people because no. the essence of what they do i mean you should look, just look at sort of bow staff you know when they do jumping around doing backflips spinning the thing because it's a light aluminium pole you know yeah that obviously doesn't have to make any sort of uh, logical sense in terms of fighting applications because all they're going to do is just spin it around fast look good and all the rest of it and get yeah but well that's my argument it should it should have a logical yes, sense yes it but, should but the problem is 
Yeah, as as they've advanced from real weaponry to light facsimile weaponry, yeah. they can do more with it because it move it can move faster. So they can yeah, they start <laughs> they start spin it around like some kind of, you know, top yeah. and it and it just it has absolutely no logical sense at all, and it cannot even defend you. Yeah. But, I mean, look at the look at the swords that people use now that that are so flimsy that the whole concept of doing the form is to stab it out as hard as you can so that it flickers at the end, so it yeah. flashes and and vibrates at the end and makes a noise. Yeah. Do you do you know in the early days, right? There's a um, there's a karate group, okay, a karate organisation or style. Yeah. that decided that they would buy this specific uniform, right? They, they bought this specific uniform. The reason being is that when they punched, it would, it would flap, flap yes, know and make a noise, know right? And it would make a noise. So they, they did it specifically so their, their, their punches... Sound more powerful. It, yeah, and, and the, the worst yeah. thing about it is when they punched... They turned their hand upside down, you know, so that the top of the hand was on top mm. and the, the, you know, the fist, fingers, thumbs underneath, right? Like a flat punch. Yeah. But they turned it early so they could then flick it upwards to create this flap right. with, the, with, the un, with the tunic. Right. Right. right? And, and it, 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 the, the noise of the tunic sounded brilliant. Yeah. But the fists were useless the punches were absolutely useless because yeah, of it yeah. and that's all that's what they did it for well the same thing now is happening of course for many years now is happening with weaponry yeah they choose all sorts of weaponry we were, we're talking about butterfly knives the other day and yeah. how i have designed you know the, the butterfly knives jim was making in scotland yeah I, I designed them so that they would be useful so that you you know because i'd go to courses i'd go to like mastia's black sesh course and they everyone would be there would be a group of third degrees doing the the butterfly knives and you could see the cuts on their hands because of the weapons they had sure. they were you know flat square metal mm. right flat flat metal around the tang and so on yeah. and and the, the the blade far too high to, to get your thumb around it. So they'd take the skin off the ins the bottom of their thumb. They would take the skin off the uh, the center, the mouth of between the fingers and the, the, the thumb, between the forefinger and the thumb, yeah. and they would cut the center of their palm when they ever they trained. So what do you think would happen to people who train with weaponry like they're that? They're not gonna wanna train it as often Exactly, as they're not gonna wanna train and they're gonna hack instead of cut. Yeah. yeah. They're gonna hack instead of slice. Yeah. So they because they're trying to Keep. In other words, they lose the use of their wrists because yeah. they can't allow the things to move, yeah. and it hurts them. Yeah. So I saw a lot of people in pain there, bleeding, yeah. and just because they were using awful weaponry. Now, you know, so some, and then I've seen plastic weaponry as well. But even the plastic weaponry is better than them. Yeah. And um, but then you see people, as I say, with the swords, with the with the very light. You know, oh, you watch these people at, in demonstrations with these sticks swinging them around spinning them around throwing them up in the air yeah. it it has really the 90 percent of the form has absolutely no martial connotation at all sure. and th but it doesn't matter to people the judges they go oh that looks pretty you know yeah. that looks great well for me i'm sorry and that's where that's why over the years you've seen less and less lao forms in the British Kung Fu Association Championships, all you see are people turn up with, with flimsy weapons yeah. or with a completely different form from another style that, yeah. that, that's much longer and elaborate yeah. so that they can, you know, show off yeah, with I these. Mean, because it's the only way they believe they can win. Yeah, yeah. And, they, yeah. and they're right. They're probably I, right. Yeah, well, no, no doubt. But, uh, I mean, look at, you know, um, look at the heavy weaponry in Lao, all right, Kwon Do. Yeah, uh, I'll talk about the Kwon Do, you, Tiger Fork as well. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the Kwon Do, you can buy Wushu versions of it. It's a very lightweight thing. Yeah. Now, how the hell can you 
I mean, the the whole point of, of, of doing a heavy weaponry is to wield it, so you don't yeah. actually carry the weight of it. Now, but That's when right. you've got a when you've got a, a a weapon like the Quan Do, which has to be heavy for you to understand it, when it's light and you're flinging it around like God knows what, you get a total false sense of mm -hmm. of what the form is. Yeah, you know. I mean, it, I mean, there there is there is a similar weapon in the Japanese, which, which was specifically for women, um, which is a pole with a nice blade on the end of it. Mm. Forgive me, but I don't know the name of it. I've forgotten mm. it. But it's a fairly it's a it's a long kind of sword blade at the on the end of a long pole, and that's for women to defend the villages and whatever. Yeah. Um, the uh, you know overall it was women training it. Yeah. And um, that's quite light, of course. Yeah. That's a lot lighter, but it's a completely different aspect to, well, of training. When, for... when, when um, I, you can explain it, I mean, take for example, we, as we know, we, we've discussed the eyebrow pole. You would cut it down to your height, your eyebrow height, which is the same as your reach. But mm -hmm. you, we can also, you can also customize or fit a sword to your stature, couldn't you? How would you make sure the sword is the right size for you? Oh, well, usually you've got to buy the sword to your stature because you know you'll put it, you'll hold it in your palm, and then it, the blade will touch your earlobe. Right. When uh, you say you, you hold you, with it, a, you hold with a straight with a straight arm, you hold yeah. the, the not the cup, the you you just basically are holding it. As yeah. if you were doing the bow, you know, you're you're holding yeah. it in, you're holding the the grip yeah. in the palm of your hand, uh, down straight with a straight arm down to your hip, yeah. and then um, you lean the, the the sword against you and yeah. the earlobe. When it reaches your earlobe, that's that's perfect yeah. height for you. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I just... that's that's in general. You know, that's mm. the way I would measure it. Mm. Other people might say different, and uh, you know, it's just my opinion and well, my experience. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah. No, it's um, going back to, to to talking about logic in forms. Mm -hmm. If we look at sort of, you can trans, you can talk about weapon forms or empty hand forms. But can, we, can I just talk about when you look at an empty hand form? All right. When you talk about logic in it, what do you mean by that? Can you just talk to me about some basic ideas, sort of? For example, the the, the is it is it the the form always must finish on a an attack? Is that correct? No, uh, um, it's it's a false assumption that I mean it is it is it should, but right. it doesn't it doesn't. Phalan Chi, for yeah. instance, I was finishes say with a press. Chi. Yeah, yeah. Phalan Chi finishes with a press down. Yeah, but and, that could also and, be a and strike then finish. That could, you can um, it well, it, it, it you could not Yes, that's true. You can interpret it as a strike because you can say someone's going to kick you, so you're striking the leg. Yeah. So you can you can interpret it like that. You know, we can play with words all we want yeah, like sure, that. Yeah. But but uh, it, yes, it should it should always finish with a finishing strike, as you say. Mm. But, uh, you know, that isn't the only thing, way to, to see how a, 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 um, a form um, is a logical form. It, it's in, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it has to be, it has to be uh, a form which, first of all, the ranges are correct for the techniques, right. okay? So the techniques have to finish. Well, I mean, if you're, if you're shuffling and punching and so on, you're moving one direction, going forwards, and then you've got to stop at some point. And I'm not going to go into, you yeah. know, that you do this, then you do sure, that, then sure. you do the other, because people won't know what I'm talking about. But yeah. basically, you're going to, you know, your maximum length or reach, and, and then you'll be turning in another direction to something very close, um, you know, as if someone is attacking you, and then counter with a with a countermeasure and a finish, and and it tends to be like that. Um, you know, some are more elaborate than others, but it tends to be like that. But but also we have to take into account that forms, even in Lao, have specific exercises in them as well yeah. but in my my view is and i know this is only my own personal preference mm. and not anyone else's but i hate to tell a student that's just an exercise because it may well be but if i'm not looking for a use for it then i'm lazy right yeah. 
It's as simple as that. So everything, you know, remember we talked about the beginning of the first set, the other, the a couple of podcasts back. Yeah. And the first move is to put your hands together in front of you, make fists and pull them back. Yeah. And we establish that that is literally someone's grabbing your wrist and you can rotate your hand and grab their wrist and, yeah. and we pull them to you. So people miss that because they, they often say, well, this is the preparation for the form. Yeah, right. This is a preparation we do in every form, yeah. but they forget that it has a use. Yeah. So when you come to something like Bok Pajern and you do the first exercises with up and pressing down yeah, and yeah, yeah. up and pressing backwards, those are literally exercises, but I'm searching right. to change the speed of them yeah. will change their usefulness. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, but but, but like you have I say, to do it logically, right? If you're going to break down the, right. the breathing exercise of the back by journey, you can't just start saying, "Oh, I'm going to do a strike well, behind me." And for anybody it. who's done Lago, uh, um, sorry, um, um, Bucking Kong, right? Bonking Kong. <laughs> I I could yeah right okay I call it Bonking Kong, so I had to be really careful <laughs> with my words then. <laughs> What's this? Some sort of <laughs> buck, monkey abuse? Buck, <laughs> buck, eight. I know. I'm buck kidding. King Kong. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The fit. The 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 eight wonders of the universe. That's what yes. Buck King Kong. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. What for are anyone the, who's done are, that? Hang on. What are the eight wonders of? Oh, the don't go into that, please. <laughs> All right. Just check Jesus. in. You know I got to ask, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go on. For anyone yeah. who's done that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> stop. Stop looking for more chicken to eat or whatever you were. No, in. no, no. I was just moving a plate. Oh, were you? All right. Um, <laughs> yeah. If for anybody who's done that form, uh, higher grades, much higher grades, they will recognise that there is a strike backwards, in exactly the same way as you do it in Buck Pajun. Yeah. Except it's done with vigour, uh, uh, so with a bit of vinegar, mm. so it's different in that sense. Okay, but in the one form you can you you say oh it's just an exercise, mm -hmm. and then the other form you do exactly the same move and call it a technique. Yeah. So, I that's why I prefer not to call things exercises, even if they are exercises. I try yeah. my damnedest to search for ways of using it technically. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and do that's you, what helps me that, learn. Yeah, that's what helps you. Do you think that's possibly overanalyzing something though? I mean, I don't know. I'm just. Well, it is only a single move. It's, yeah. it's it's individual moves, so it's not like I'm not trying to completely change the whole perception of yeah, the form. Sure. I'm simply just saying, okay, if my hand goes back like that, how could I possibly use it? Yeah. And mm -hmm. going pushing it backwards like that, you know, if someone was behind you, then there it is, yeah. you know, a groin. It's funny that you mentioned uh, backing gun because it's it's what you would class as a training form in Lao. Uh, there is no uh, bow. Uh, or salutation at the start of that form. Isn't no, it? that's right. Yeah. Um, what, what what makes it a training form? Because it's um, for those people who don't know, it's uh, it's the only sort of s uh, empty hand form after your black sash, really, isn't it? Yeah, and and I'm afraid that escapes me because you know, in, like you say, it is the only one that is specifically a training form, except for the first sets, because the first set hasn't got a bow, yeah. second set hasn't got a bow, so you can, those are training forms if you if you okay. want to put them in yeah. that kind of category, but um, it's a form that exists in between all the weapons and so on, and after the, the, the you know, development of the syllabus up to the first grades, yeah. the first black sash, so yeah. um, it, it does apply uh, different concepts. Um, but I think if you do it and you start to search for the, the moves from the previous sets, yeah. a lot of those movements, although the hands may be different shapes, the purpose of, of the techniques could be the same. Yeah, absolutely. So, but I'm not going to go deeply no. into it. Because no, we should, we'll save be that for, for another one. And there's very few people, not that many people, yeah. that know Buck King come to a, a high degree anyway. Right. So. Right. But, but I can, we can certainly save that for another podcast because I do want to talk about similarities like that. But... Um, yeah. Going back to just generalizing about forms and what makes them logical. Um, I mean, a form really, you know, should 
start at a certain point and should end at, at the same point. Is that right? Facing in the same direction. Yeah. Usually, that's for the Laogar forms. Um, yeah, sure. People would argue that other styles do differently. They end up all over the place, so they might end up facing a different direction as well. Yeah. I can't understand that, though. I think it's just because they get a, make a mistake and they keep that mistake. Yeah. So, we, the the other day when I when I sent you some video of me of me doing the forms. Uh -huh. um, you mentioned to me. You said, you said that my grammar was was correct, but uh -huh. but I need to create. Um, you use the term characters. Need to create characters in what I'm doing. Now, mm -hmm. obviously, the people are going what? Uh, then he went on to explain it to me. Could you explain to me what you saw? in my forms and, and and hopefully to try and you know help people yeah. at home and and just yeah. elaborate a bit mm -hmm. yeah um when we talk kung fu it's always a good idea i i find it's a really simple way of teaching beginners and anyone else to use the concept of writing okay of of english or, or whatever language yeah. of writing so you have a b c as a development of individual movements yeah. then these movements become uh you know you put them together they become words and and obviously the more you train the more capable the, the more elaborate the techniques become the more uh, you can do with them so they become sentences and and eventually you can form um chapters paragraphs yeah. you know whatever paragraphs chapters whatever mm -hmm. and so you and eventually you can speak volumes yeah? yeah but what i said to you about your form was technically everything was pretty much correct right no one's ever going to be perfect no one's ever going to be the same we're all different yeah. individuals so we're going to have slightly different perceptions of it being that every single movement has at least six uses in theory in our minds i we will be thinking about doing something different to the next guy or we may be thinking about doing something different to what we did previously yeah so it depends totally on what's in our mind when we do it so when i said to you your grammar is correct what i meant by that is it's technically right okay but you've got to and, and i did say this to you you've got to do your sets like you were fighting Right. And then, of course, I also said you fight like you're doing your sets, but the sets have firstly got to be like you were fighting. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're presenting the words to people perfectly, but who speaks perfect English? I don't know right? what you mean, mate. <laughs> yeah, no one does. They don't speak perfect English. And, and the, the, yeah. the example I gave you was a German word, which was Vigator yeah, yeah. Uh you know, how are you, whatever. And, but, but that's like proper grammar. Yeah. Forgive me if, if my accent is wrong, yeah. but it's, it's like, as an example, it's proper gra grammar. But then when uh, a German would say hello, he, he would say Vigates. Yeah. And that would be it. He wouldn't he wouldn't go vigate it. He, you know, like you would read in a <laughs> in a phrase book. And when you learn a language you get the perfect grammar yeah. in the in the book. Yeah. But they don't teach you the slang, they yeah. don't teach you the you know, and you have to learn that over a period of time yeah. so that you then fit in as a as a as a national. Yeah. And you, you then you can you can feel like a national because you can understand the lang language. Well, I mean, just um, just imagine what people are like when they come over to the, to England <laughs> and they've learned French in Belgium for you. Uh, sorry, they've learned uh, English uh, in in Belgium or in France, and they come over to 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 learn the language properly, yeah. and they just go. You know what? I think I may as well go home because <laughs> I can't understand a bloody word. They said because they ended up in you know in in Scotland, in, yeah, or, <laughs> no, or in the Polish the other night. <laughs> they went to they got off the ferry in the northeast. <laughs> Oh, perfect okay. english in norway yeah. and they get off they get off the ferry in in bloody newcastle yeah and they just go what <laughs> <laughs> so it's that it's that what i'm talking about yeah. you've got you know when you do a form you have to apply it mm. and 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 throw a few you know little idiosyncrasies out there because in other words it's so important to do what you're doing not 
do what you're thinking people want to see, mm. but do what you are actually applying. So yeah, yeah. it can look quite aggressive. It can look quite um, uh, messy, yeah. but it's got to work. So some people will do the set completely messy and not know what they're doing. Yeah. And they'll, they'll completely throw the techniques out of sync and mm -hmm. timing is wrong and everything. But, but, but if you practice a set perfectly, as you are doing, and it, it becomes perfect grammar, you've got to eventually start to be fluid mm -hmm. and, and, and don't hold back, just yeah. let it go. Yeah. But, but that is when you become, you start to master your footwork uh, because if you throw yourself too far forward, too much information or too much energy, too much uh, inertia, if you like, yeah, yeah. You, end up, you end up losing footwork. But there's nothing in any form or anyone should ever suggest that there's no reason why you can't make two steps instead of one. As long as you end up on the correct foot, there's no reason why you can't shuffle yeah. instead of stepping. As long as you end up on the correct foot afterwards, yeah. you know. There's, yeah. So you've got to. Your body is your height, and you know whoever you're fighting, maybe you're a different height. You've got to be able to reach them. You, you've, you've, and you've that's got, not always yeah. possible. Yeah, you've you've got to um, sort of uh, ad lib. Ad lib. There you go. Mm -hmm. Ad lib, and and don't be afraid to. Because no, don't be afraid. To. I think I think the, too many people when they're learning forms. Um, obviously, learning forms is different than training. Yeah, the form, yeah right? well, but that's the grammar. We're yes, learning the yes, grammar when we're in Eng when we're at our English school. You know, in our English class, yeah. we learn the proper nouns and the yeah, proper, yeah. Uh, you know, vocabulary, and yeah. we and we learn the grammar. Once we get out of that class, we don't talk like that. Yeah, right. we don't write like that. And that's what people have got to develop. So as they're learning their martial art, they sh most definitely should learn the proper grammar. Yeah. If you don't have proper grammar, you will not be able to do that set properly. No. You'll never be able to talk properly. No. You know, you've got to understand and so that other people understand you. Yeah. That's what our language is. Yeah, but right. fighting is exactly the same thing. You know, you've got to do things where other people can respond to them so that you can train. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, you ain't got a clue. Yeah. And of course... When you're fighting, you can take that away. It's like creating an argument. You know, you create an argument, you set someone up for a, for a, a rebuff, and you know, you win the argument. Yeah. It's just that's the same with fighting. You know, change. You know, change the way you say things, and then they say, "Yeah, but you yeah. said this." You say, "Ah, I didn't. I actually said this." And you know, and and they go, "Oh, yeah, you did actually. You did say that." So, do you know, that's that's how language works, yeah. and it's exactly the same with yeah, martial sure. arts. Yeah. So, uh, I mean. I think you've kind of answered this, but just just reiterate the point. When you said, um, "I want you to create characters, James," what did you mean by that the other day when I was talking? About um, yeah, yeah. When you're fighting, uh, oh, sorry, when you're doing a form, uh, you've got to imagine that you're attacking someone. So therefore, you know, you might get to a point where you've 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 covered yourself or you've parried and then you do the next technique and you you hone the technique you get it perfectly on target but and then you've got to imagine what response the other person or the imaginary person he's doing is he moving backwards now is he standing his ground is he moving to the side you know within the, the context of the form mm. and then and then apply it in that way so don't just reach the same place with two techniques yeah. because that doesn't really it's not reality is it mm. you know you hit him he starts to move backwards you follow it through yeah. a good example of that is in far Kuhn where just before you go down cross your legs to go to sit yeah. you are you know you're striking and then you're following it up yeah. you know with an extra long, an extra long step yeah, yeah. A roll so punch. That, that's what yeah. you're talking about for those people yeah. who you're talking yeah. about the the first rolling punch in Gaucho, yeah, uh, Farquhar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you've you've always you know if you if you're doing a form and you can you can look at an example of that in um, obviously you know uh, like I look at Kuhn or but look at Back Pie Jern for all those brown sashes listening as yeah. your uh, actually no sorry like I look at Kuhn you're following through that technique you know when you repeat the uh, the the the, the, the 
palm up block and punch and you do it three yeah. times again yeah. that's for repetition but you're chasing yeah. it so what yeah. you want to think about you know and this is you've this is something you've said to me i mean if you're striking someone and they're going back you're you know you've got to follow it yeah. you've got to follow it because and you can't energy, be pulling your hand back no, as well no but they're also because them going back is dissipating your energy because you're attacking yeah. forward so you have to really chase it you know yeah um, yeah etc yeah no it's yeah. Um, really interesting that you know um but i you did use the word perfect in my forms i'm just saying just saying everybody perfect <laughs> <laughs> Or yeah. uh, with me, it's like forget the, the gate scene, and it's uh, ich bin ein donut, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're talking about forms, right? Which is a good segue because I want to just uh, talk a bit about chop choy, right? Okay. I know you don't want to talk any more about forms or whatever. No, no, I'm, I'm quite happy you, to talk right? about forms so, uh, as long good. as people. You know, it is only my opinion, and and I, and I think a lot of people tend to think that uh, you know, instructors should know bloody everything. Yeah, um, I get that. You find that you'll forget the stuff that, like I said earlier, people have certain traits, certain interests, like competition yeah. fighting, like technical stuff or whatever. Mine is the physicality of martial arts. Mm -hmm. It's not knowing what it's called it's not knowing where it came from it's yeah. not understanding the history of a nation that is 30 times bigger than my own yeah. how the hell am i going to do that so i'm not interested in that it takes away what my real yeah. joy my real purpose in life is to understand the science and the usefulness of the techniques i'm doing if otherwise what's the point in doing them yeah Listen, I don't want to. I don't want to jump around with a flimsy weapon. I want a bloody sharp sword, yeah. and I had a damn good sharp sword. My wife left it in <laughs> bloody England. I remember. And, and I remember I, you cut yourself under the arm with the, with what the sword that you gave me. I'm still yeah, yeah, it. great. It yeah, I, I I ordered sixteen yeah. swords. Yeah. From the USA, which are was real good steel. Yeah. Right, good solid swords, real good steel. Uh, very very sharp yeah. and and as you know uh, a the Dao the the Chinese broadsword is fatter at the the, the blade end than it is at, towards the grip yeah. and towards the cup and so of course they come and they got a bit of oil on them so I kind of wiped it and of course as I wiped it the blade is getting bigger and bigger and it cut a hole in my shirt as I tried give it a wipe and then i had a phone call from all the people that uh had, had given these swords to and they each each of them had cut themselves in one way or another so <laughs> so it was it was brilliant because yes you know the damn you have some respect for it from yeah, then on course, yeah. you know and from then on when you do the sword you throw it around with gusto yeah. but you know damn well where it's going because yeah. if you don't you better duck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because okay. it, it, I, and I used to do the garden with it that's how I used to train I yeah. used to chop trees I know I and was everything. there I was there yeah. picking up yeah. the branches yeah <laughs> <laughs> they, it was amazing yeah just don't get too close yeah yeah there's a great video on our YouTube channel actually uh, called the uh, Laogar Weaponry uh, and yeah. Steve's, we're, we're in Bromsgrove and Steve's just talking about the uh, some of the just very briefly some of the weapons so if you if you go, go on our youtube and uh, check out the video mm -hmm. but you know you've got to subscribe to us please do that would be great um right going forward chop choy i want to talk about it yep give us the lowdown mr newbie well chop choy is, is an unusual fo uh, form within you know the the seven forms that we do isn't it it has a specific um knuckle yeah the four finger yeah. knuckle Okay, Phoenix, they call it. Phoenix Eye. Fist. Yeah. And it's, what's it, Esfunan es Choi? Now, I know you don't give a shit what it's called, but... Chop Choi. There are some people on YouTube who say yeah. Chop Choi refers to the shape of the the, 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 knock, the single knuckle on the fist. It's not. That doesn't no. mean Chop Choi. Char right. Chop is, is the, the... It's called drilling punches. It's a yeah. drill. It's, it's the way the hand moves and twists. And imagine that you're thrusting rice into a paddy field. You're you're planting rice, right? So you would hold the rice. Each each, you know, 
handful of rice and i'm not talking about the like just the little ricey bits i'm talking about the plant okay yeah. and you obviously then thrust the plant into the mud under the water because it's a paddy field right. so it has water over it it's it's a very wet field yeah. and you're thrusting your hand into the mud to bury the um the plant so that yeah. you can grow your rice and that's what it refers to the thrusting of it it's char char okay. choy okay and and it's the movement that you make with that knuckle not just striking with the knuckle but twisting yeah. so when you when you do the first three punches they are drilling punches but they are rotating as you do so yeah. right and and also when you're you go down on your knee you're doing exactly the same thing right i mean there are ways that you can do it there is some you know we we can crack if you like crack the knuckle on someone's uh oh. you know yeah their, their yeah their, their feet yeah um dragon's tears that's what it's called the right. top of the foot yeah. um with the what are they called are they are they um What's these bones in the hand? What well, are they called? Metacarpals. Uh, metacarpals or metatarsals. What oh, are they? Oh, yeah, I don't know. T for toes? I don't metatarsals. know. Metatarsals? I don't know. Nor do I. Me, Mr. Yeah. Newby. I just know if you hit I, I, You know, well, this is it. You learn these things and you forget. Yeah, yeah. anyway, it hurts. Yeah. So you can do it like that, like a crack, or you can you can drill it down uh, to strike exactly the same target, but doing it in a, in a completely... So it's it's... It's rotating in in any shape or form. Most te most techniques will rotate. Are you are okay. you doing the, are you doing the form now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you hear me? You I hear me smacking the bed? I can hear you doing like rustling and stuff. I'm like, you yeah, do realise yeah. like this is you know a radio show. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. So my my com computer screen is off. Right. So I've got like a mirror of myself. Uh, so I, as I'm doing it, I'm, I'm doing it in front of the mirror. <laughs> So yeah. The, um, anyway, so, the, so so going back to that, yeah. uh, I apologise. That's gone on a bit. Just it it is sharp as in drilling punches. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not the shape of the punch. Now um, there are three shuffles in this form. Correct. Um, I'm going to have to think about it. I'm thinking about it. Yeah, there is. Uh, five shouts, three shuffles. Five shouts, three shuffles. Yeah. Um, common. Mm, common mistakes with this form. What would you say? What would you say? Okay, um, going down is one. People are not tight enough. Uh, when, they're sitting when... on their they're sitting on their toes so, and not putting the foot flat. Right. So if if you're if you're bending your toes back as yeah. you, as you sink down on one leg, that's not correct. You're pointing no, your the... toes out. You have to point your toes and put your instep on the floor flat yeah. and very tight to you, very close. Tiny weeny, tiny weeny. I'll, gi I'll give you, a, I'll give you um, this a little bit of information. Ooh. Okay, just Ooh. simple. Okay, Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Yeah. Okay. So because people look at a set like that and they go, what the hell are you going down for? Yeah. Okay, why would you go down like that? Because if you're fit enough to get up, you can go down. If you're not fit enough to get up, don't go down. Right. Simple as that. Okay, so same concept, Staffordshire Bull Terrier. In the 17th century, 16th, 17th century, they decided that, you know, bull baiting, where a, a, a bull terrier or a bull mastiff at that time would attack a, a bull, which is why it was called a bloody bull mastiff. Mm -hmm. Okay, or, or a pit bull, as mm -hmm. you say. Yeah. Okay, so they're called pit bulls, and they would be bet upon people would bet on the dog to the closest one to the ball and if they could get it down then great they'd bite their ear they grab their ear pull it down the same as they would in a dog fight yeah. their ear or their knackers they go straight for the knackers by the way the dog they go straight right. for the balls dave get a twist the ball, dave. <laughs> that's exactly right that's what a pit See, bull that's does old that's what any dog called. does yeah okay so um what they discovered what they realized was the dog kept getting kicked, right? It was too, too big, the dog was too big. So they bred it out, they bred it smaller, and you end up with a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Right. Now, by the time they'd done that, of course, people had gone to America, so the pit bull remains in America and here in Canada, okay? But 
in yeah. England, they're very rare and probably illegal to own. Mm. <laughs> but the Staffordshire Bull Terrier was small enough so that when the, the bull kicked, it would completely miss the dog. And right. so the, the whole concept of going down in the set is to get away from the hands and concentrate on the target of the foot as it's kicking. Yeah. Okay, so you become a much smaller target in yeah. effect. Yeah. So that's, that's really the purpose behind that kind of technique. But when, when people try to do it today, of course they haven't trained in any way or shape or form that they would have done the old days. Mm -hmm. So it's a very arduous and strenuous technique for them to do. Yeah. And so they would never do that in a real fight. They would never consider it, but think about it in the amount of training they would have done in the e earlier times. Yeah. They would they would use that technique. So, yeah. and it, much the same with Falcune, similar yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. So, but a, for a different reason. Yeah. So th these kind of forms are very interesting because they hold the value of the old style. Yeah. No one is gonna train them in the way they used to. And so that's why a lot of people go, oh, these, you know, that I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. I'm not going to bother learning it. I'm not going to bother teaching it. And then that's when the style starts to fall apart. So you lose those really, really valuable, um, you know, parts of history mm -hmm. for that reason. Mm -hmm. So yeah. anyway, yeah. so that's, that's the, one of the things that tends to be wrong. The other thing is people tend to open their hand, the, the whole hand style, the whole form is meant to be with that uh, fist, with the phoenix eye, or phoenix fist. Mm -hmm. And um, even when you, the only time that you don't use that phoenix fist is when you're doing the palm against the, el the, the, the fist in order to knock the elbow yeah. back. Yeah. Okay, that's the only time you do it when you open your palm yeah. to do it. Now I have seen people, <laughs> I have seen people keep the knuckle there and avoid it by sticking it between the thumb and the fingers, you know, in other words, yeah. you know, miss, missing that completely. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, there's no logic in that. No. Because you're not hitting anything, okay? You're not you're striking or blocking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You're hitting yourself. So when, if you do that, what's the point? Just make it. Yeah. You can move your bloody fingers, you know. Yeah. So just move them and yeah. just make a normal fist and do the elbow yeah. backwards. But, hey, but hey, you know. Ad lib a bit people yeah. Um, yeah and then never when you're doing the block around your face around your neck it is still the knuckle it is not an open palm mm -hmm. yeah as i've also seen yeah um so. we're going to the 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 elbow a lot of people um don't short elbows their, yes a lot of people have mm. short elbows you can tell it's short because their elbow will drop down the side of their waist if well it's not that, just that yeah, I was going to say, it's not just that. They don't even come be from behind their back. If you watch someone doing it from behind mm -hmm. and you see them do an elbow, you'd have to be, you know, pretty much up their ass in order mm -hmm. to get hit. Yeah. You just, you just, you know, you cannot... You know, there's no elbow. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. hit, go anywhere. So raise your, your, your fist pretty much underneath your armpit. And, yeah, and yeah, you will notice yeah. the range of your elbow protruding out the back will yeah. increase exactly you've got to hit your elbow you've got to hit your palm uh, your fist rather with your palm so hard as well as obviously pushing your arm back mm -hmm. so much so that your elbow uh, sorry your fist goes right up your armpit Ooh, do, and you know, do you know you're getting excited talking about this because my sound levels are going uh, I'm, I'm f yeah i'm physically doing it as we t as I we guess speak the sound levels are just jumping in the red and i'm going don't get uh, it in I, the red sorry i get it's passionate right. I, no, it's all right I yeah get... no absolutely See, yeah. see that people forty years plus trainees still doing chop choy. There you go. Oh, yeah. um, uh, when you're going down on uh, one leg, kneeling stance, yeah. um, mm -hmm. uh, the the knee and the toes should be pretty much in line with each other. Is that correct? Yeah, very tight. Yeah, yeah. very tight. Yeah. yeah. And down. Um, and yeah, as we've mentioned, three shuffles, five shouts. Um, yeah. I think what a lot of people don't understand about chop choy is. A lot of the movement, I mean, in Kung Fu in general, but you can really emphasize some of these, uh, you know, the wrist movements in this set, you know, yeah. using the wrist to mm -hmm. almost uh, wipe across, almost like um, uh, uh, the willow palm or, or yeah. pet sow or whatever. You it's exactly the same. It's you the rotate same. out, you rotate yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, you know, but you're doing it with a closed fist. And yeah. isn't it interesting, like, 
like you always say, and we will talk about this on another podcast, but a lot of the movements are essentially the same, just either, oh, you can do it with a closed fist, you can yep. do it with a single knuckle. Um, well, yeah. I was going to say, I want you to imagine that someone's grabbed your hand and you intend to use your single knuckle because maybe you haven't got the power uh, you've got the training to do the single knuckle, but you haven't got the power because you're a much smaller person mm -hmm. compared to your target. Yeah. And this big target has grabbed your wrist. So you are doing that rotation exactly the same as you would in the first set or anywhere else so that you can then dislodge or dis disconnect the, the grabbing arm before he gets a good grip rotate and then you're so close to strike but you've got you know the ribs or whatever mm. but this is because you are you're very close in fighting mm. if you are that close and you haven't made a knuckle by then it's not going to form by the time you hit that person so you've you, you, that's why people have prepared formed knuckles previously yeah. when they're close up so if they are intended to go close in and obviously if you've got a big opponent like I've just described mm. and you are small then you're safer close in so as you go close in and the person grabs hold of your arm you do the rotation your knock is already formed your knuckles already formed and you're able to use it yeah. but if you don't form it by that time you're gonna break your fingers on the way in so don't uh, yeah. don't do it when, when, when you do make um, the uh, Phoenix eye fist it's got to be very solid because I see a lot of people in video footage or whatever. There's a noticeable gap. You can see air. You can see, you know, daylight <laughs> yeah. through your knuckle, yeah. right? So when you do it, it's got to be solid, you know. And and yeah. like with anything, if you're gonna you want to use a technique like that, for Christ's sake, train it. You know, yeah. try just do it on a heavy bag. If you do it on a heavy bag and you think Jesus, and you've done it, poor long, Bob's good. Yeah, Bob was brilliant, wasn't he? Bob yeah, Paul great. Bob's good. Just keep hitting him on the knuckle, on on the forehead with your yeah. knuckle. Didn't oh my god! Didn't Martin yeah. once knock someone out with doing that? Hit him, hit him in, in the yeah. Of the they said, with. oh yeah, they, yeah, yeah. He said, Jesus. <laughs> he says, oh that thing that don't work, and, he, and Martin went, yeah, it does, and he hit him, and he collapsed. <laughs> uh, was that like pre uh, pre health and safety? <laughs> I guess. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Oh, that don't work. Yeah, it does. Whack down. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Um. Oh, one thing. One thing I skipped over on Chomp Joy, right, is talking about the bow itself. Yeah. Explain the reason we 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 have the salutation and its connotations. Okay. Well, the the, the bow itself is obviously the Shaolin bow. Okay. At the obviously. time. Obviously. Yeah. Well, it, it no. That's actually not true because the, the 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 actual bow of the monks would have been a single hand okay in respect of the person who allegedly chopped his arm off in order to become a disciple of bodhidharma mm. okay so he chopped his one arm off his left arm and so they always have their right hand in the center because well, as, as that's their bow didn't bodhidharma say i'll teach you when the uh, when, when the, the ground when the, the ground when the snow coming. turns red there you go when the snow turns red there you go yeah so, so every so time you see a shaolin monk with a single hand in the middle that's the respect yeah that's the respect that that monk yeah, yeah. um you know again this is you know history that i was told and other people will have different versions or, or just completely disputed it's up to them uh, i'm only telling you how i know it um this i don't know why i have to keep on bloody apologizing yeah. for what this i'm is, saying why should i apologize hey, it's your podcast you know. what the hell yeah if you have a problem just just give us a call you know what i mean yeah just write in just, just yeah. say you're yeah, bloody wrong tell me about it you know <laughs> and give me a good give me your version you know, but Absolutely. don't give me pages of it because I ain't going to read it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And if you ask me, don't ever ask me to explain the bloody history of the lion because the lion dance has got about 600 different versions of how it came about. Yeah. So, and then you're going to ask, well, what's the color of this lion represent the color of that lion? You know, and, oh, shut up. <laughs> I'm not interested. You know, you were you know. master, Mister Newby. You were supposed to know this stuff. <laughs> no. Come on. So, Go on, well, where was where we're was we now? About the bow, the kinlan. Yeah, the bow. bow. Okay, so yeah, the 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 fighting monks' bow became apparent after the 
uh, destruction of the temple when they were it's a secret bow that you would display to people that you met on the you know if you met another group of people that you know like um, a group of revolutionaries or a group of people you may have mistook for revolutionaries and they might have been on the side of the uh, the the Queen dynasty okay or Qing dynasty or whatever you want to call it then you would put your bow together your left palm over the right fist the left palm represents the crescent moon and the right fist represents the 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 uh, sun when they're together they're the brightest thing in the skies yeah in those days that's the brightest thing the sun and the moon mm -hmm. so when you do that if the other person then went oh wait a minute we're not supporters so then they pull their swords out or you know put their fists up to fight you the left hand is pushed out to begin to be the defender the def defending arm mm -hmm. and the right fist is already made yeah. so there you have well, the preparation for yeah, the bow so, and the connotation for it so the, the 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 crescent moon and the sun when they when you put them together it's the brightest thing in the universe which is yeah ming, and ming means ming. brightness and yes. it was also the name of a dynasty so if, if it was the name of the dynasty they supported yes yeah, the ming dynasty yeah, yeah. So, oh, sorry you didn't just mention that that's why i thought i'd say it um yeah actually, that's fine it, it's mm -hmm. it's actually more of a political connotation um yes. when you think about yeah. it yeah, the of bow. course uh yeah. you know uh done anything yeah. so it's, it's, it's tr it used to be a secretive bow but even action man does it today so action man the greatest hero of the <laughs> sorry uh yeah <laughs> so that's 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 the history of the bow yeah. okay yeah. and of course there are more elaborate bows where they pull it back behind to the side and stuff it out and then step it back to the left side as you yeah. step back and then to the middle to finish mm -hmm. you know like a hungar or you know yeah. when you do for hok or mm -hmm. for hok ying or whatever the tiger and crane combined form well, I, uh, I don't know what the foo hok you're on about but <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yep. So, so anyway, that's uh, so. Yes, there are far more elaborate bows, but you know, keep your bow simple. Don't be a Duke and do practitioner. <laughs> <laughs> spend oh, half God. an hour doing different people's bows because oh, you God. claim to, you claim to, you know, kind of respect them, and yet at the same time, you just don't do the style because you don't respect it Seriously. because you don't think it's worth it. Oh. So. Oh. That's the funniest thing, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Um, right, Chop Choy, anything else to say about it? Um, yeah, the end, the end of it. The end when, of it. When, you, when you bring your, into the last uh, horse position, mm -hmm. when you get into the horse position, you pull your arms together, mm -hmm. uh, you trap, trap them together, yeah. okay? Uh, and then you drop them down. When you drop them down, those arms must stay together until the fists have rotated completely down uh, into the towards a similar target as you know about six inches six inches apart mm -hmm. um and the reason for that is simply that if you open your elbows before you drop those fists down all you're doing is opening yourself up to get hit yeah. so and because you're in a horse riding stance as well it's not a good idea so yeah, but, you, you, but remember guys you've got to think outside the box this, these techniques don't have to be done individually in a horse riding stance oh, of course not no so, but when we're doing we, yeah. when we're doing the set we have to have a logical outcome don't yeah, we yeah. so we have to look at it as um, a logical i outcome. think we, we, we just to mention in this in in chop choy just the the middle section when we're, we're we're doing sort of the walk um as you as you, as you would say um can you just briefly talk about that and then we'll we'll knock it on the head in, in, as far as Chop Choi is concerned so what party exactly are you, you so meaning after that? you've gone down uh, you've come up you've taken a step you've punched and then you're going to do a 90 degree turn okay mm -hmm. into yeah. uh, what we would what, what you can just imagine both hands both you know fists are uh, sort of you know presented out and then you oh right so they're just blocking away yeah yeah, yeah. so as if someone was you, you're back on a some people go into a hanging stance it's, there's no hanging stance yeah. there but but can i can i just ask you to start with the actual 90 degree turn itself because there's a little detail that i always appreciate you talking oh about. where the where the one hand remains on the outside all the time um no i was talking about actually when you pivot do you pivot on your heels or do you pivot on the balls of your foot 
I'm going to pivot on the ball of, on, on the heel of my foot. I'm going to turn it in like a, almost like an eight stance. Yeah. And the reason I do that is because it tightens you up. And as it tightens up the, 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 the stance, it's very much like when you do the things with your wrist where you completely coil your wrist as far as you can. Yeah. And what does your wrist want to do? It wants to uncoil. Yeah. So it makes it physically easier. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it gives, it, it's less energy used to create more energy, yeah. if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. So what you're doing with that is as I turn, I will turn on the heel of my foot. It will become a very tight step, almost like an eight stance. Mm -hmm. And then when you move, you're you're coiled and you uncoil as yeah. you and it enables you to shuffle forwards much much more fluidly yeah that's why i do that yeah you, you there's also another reason you do it and when you um turn on the heels of your feet for example yeah. you're doing a 90 degree you're actually moving closer to, to the yes yeah, target, yeah as opposed to if you turn on the balls of your feet you're actually moving yourself away so one could be interpreted interpreted as offensive or defensive yeah. I know where you're coming from. Yeah, I know where you're coming from with that. But in, in the case of the set, it's only the back foot that turns in. So you're, you're not going to get any closer. You're going to be coiled. Yeah. Then you'll shuffle. Okay. So you're able to move forward. But yeah, I know exactly. Yeah, Often people turn on the ball of their foot when they should be turning on their heel and often vice versa. Yeah. So in order to be closer, if you stood with your, as you, you just said, uh, with, with in a normal fighting stance and you turn say your left fighter stance, so you're going to turn to your right. If you turn on the ball of your foot, you're going to be further away from the target on your right. Yeah. If you turn on the heels of your foot, both feet, then you're going to be closer. Yeah. It's it's just, yeah, it, it's a little idiosyncrasy that... Yeah, uh, it's, it's detail. I like detail. Yeah, it's, it's great for beginners to yeah. learn this kind of thing. Absolutely. And, and people who don't understand it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, talk about the, the walk. In it. So we're in the middle section of chart choice, so to speak. So it's it's well, it's it's the where the arms are together, where the person is going, where you've just simply turned before mm. you shuffle with the two two strikes, with the double strike. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's always good to do a double strike singularly. I know that doesn't make sense, does it? <laughs> well, you've always said to me, two is one and one is two. So yeah. So okay. So basically, as a person is going to dive at you or come at you try to grab you whatever you're withdrawing but please don't withdraw onto a hanging step it's not a hanging step there's no point if you bring that foot back then you then have to take it forward again and that wastes time so leave the foot where it is certainly rock back onto the the back leg um bent knee and so on and keep the the toes are up the heels you're on the heel of the foot of the right foot and you're basically opening up that that person's attack yeah. so as he grabs you with both hands he's trying to grab your shoulders to headbutt you or whatever you're withdrawing you strike out rotating those fists uh hitting them, them up yeah call, bang out and his arms are going to guide your fists as mm -hmm. they rotate back again and flat straight towards his uh, collarbone his face whatever you yeah. want to hit but um, okay it's 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 worth saying guys we will be doing some videos yeah um, soon so uh, we will certainly be able to explain <laughs> a lot more uh, mr newbie mr newbie will be able to explain a lot more than hmm. actually talking about it um it's always yeah i like people to ask me questions yeah, send me sure, questions sure. i'll send you a video by all means yeah. i'll always because people often have similar questions we can make a video and provide people with the information if Absolutely. they require it guys guys mm. as always if you have any questions about the sets and you want to do you know a, 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 a written question or you want to send us a video whatever yeah just yeah, for you our can consideration send... you can send us a video do it on Facebook. yeah because you can always argue your you disagree with me yeah. that's absolutely really good because it helps us to learn absolutely. and uh, it'll help you to learn if if you get the logic in what i'm trying yeah. to say because i'm just thinking in a logical sense yeah. and uh, and you know backed up with a bit of experience um, but obviously if you have an argument and say well look I don't do it this way I do it this way and then you show me it on a video I can then see what you're trying to talk about because you can describe it and then we can have a much better discussion yeah be you know and I can I can I can then answer that either by emailing you yeah. back or by sending another video and yeah. with a different purpose or reason um right so in 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 short in conclusion Chop Choi um, it's a very it's a very short set, uh, as we've discussed before. A lot of the sets in Lao are quite short. Yeah, very narrow, very 
explosive, but it's the yeah. first set where you really start uh, footwork. Yeah, footwork. So footwork. And if you are going to learn sharp choi, uh, a suggestion for your training is do it without any of the hand movements. Mm. Right. Do the f steps and get good at the steps with the, with the little idiosyncrasies with the footwork. In other words, turning the heel, turning the toes, whatever. Hanging steps, sitting down, kneeling down, horse riding stances, low horse riding stances. Practice all all the stance work without any hand movement, and then do the hand movement without the stance work before you do it complete. There you go. There you go, guys. That's Let that sink in. Certainly tough stuff. Um, Guys, we've we've got we've got to finish. We've got to uh, we've got to book book out book out. Um, Mr. Newbie, yeah. thank you so much for another. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderfully technical episode of the Kung Fu Podcast. We really aim to send this information. Did we, did we answer that guy's question? By the way, um, <laughs> not, I think we kind of did in a. Well, you sent him some information anyway, didn't you? You sent him some information. Yeah, yeah. But, but if he's got any, anyone's got any specific questions, I'd I'd love to hear it because I mean, I'm sitting here in Canada. I'm the only person in Canada that I know of that trains loud, and uh, it's, a it's big kind place. of a bit of a problem. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's put it this way: you are closer to Toronto than I am. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> That just gives you some idea of how big it is. Oh, marvellous. Well, you know, I'm not, I don't feel sorry for you at all. When you look out your window and you see those mountains and breathe that fresh air, I, I really don't feel sorry for you, just so you know. Just so you know. And I hope you yeah. choke on the DQs and the, the Tim Hortons and all that. I really do. No, I don't. Yeah. Don't choke because I'll have no one to teach me. <laughs> Guys, thanks again for joining us for another episode of the Kung Fu Podcast. My most sincere thanks to my teacher, Mr. Steve Newby. Steve, do you want to say bye? Yeah. I, I am, I, yes. Okay, goodbye. I was just going to send you a video of because uh, I want to walk today right. and uh, I got a video of a woodpecker. Okay. All right, that's um. lovely. <laughs> lovely video. Listen, hold that thought. We've got to sign off. Okay. okay. I await the woodpecker video with uh, great anticipation. Guys, take care. All the best now. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>